Why do we have summer and winter, day and night? This is the universe, full of stars and galaxies. Our own galaxy is called the Milky Way, and our sun is just one of its 100 billion stars. Our local neighborhood is called the solar system, consisting of the sun, eight planets, and loads of moons, asteroids, ice, and rocks. From left to right, you see the sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. However, the scale of this picture is wrong. The Sun is far, far bigger than the rest and planets are much further apart. If your classroom were the solar system, with the Sun the size of a marble, then Earth is a grain of sand at completely the other side of the classroom. The rest is empty space. This is Earth. It spins around itself in 24 hours, creating day and night. It takes one year for Earth to orbit the Sun. However, the Earth's axis is tilted at 23 and a half degrees. In other words, Earth is not straight up. During the year, as Earth orbits the Sun, it changes which place gets the most sunshine. In June, the Northern Hemisphere faces the Sun, creating summer in the northern half of Earth and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Antarctica is covered in darkness these months, yet the North Pole has 24 hours of daylight every day. In September, the whole world has 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, creating spring in the south and autumn in the north. By December, it stays dark at the North Pole. Even as the Earth rotates, sunlight is unable to reach the top of the Earth. In Europe, Russia, Alaska and Canada, days are short now and nights are long. Penguins on the South Pole, however, are enjoying summer, with daylight for 24 hours. Australia celebrates Christmas during summer. In March, again the whole planet has 12 hours of daylight, creating spring in the north and autumn in the southern hemisphere. Let's have a closer look at the most noticeable difference, June versus December. In December, the sun shines straight onto the Tropic of Capricorn, making this region the hottest in the world. And did you see the North Pole isn't getting any sunlight while the Earth rotates? In June, things are the other way round. If in June you stand on the Tropic of Cancer, the sun will be straight above you. At noon, you won't even have much of a shadow. It's now winter in Antarctica, with months of perpetual darkness, and temperatures are down to minus 70 degrees. In fact, winters are slightly colder on the southern hemisphere, as Earth happens to be a bit further away from the sun in July. Summer in the polar regions, 24 hours of daylight. If you take a picture every hour and combine them, you will see this. The sun just never sets. It just goes round and round. And these are my own pictures. This phenomenon is called the midnight sun. In the winter time, the polar regions are treated with another spectacle, the aurora. Particles of space radiation enter our atmosphere, creating green and purple clouds. This is caused by the Earth's magnetic field. The moon also has some effects on Earth. It takes the moon about one month, well, 28 days, to orbit Earth. The tides in the sea are caused by the moon's gravity. When the moon is on the other side of the earth than the sun is, we can see it as a full moon. And occasionally the moon blocks the sun. It's called a solar eclipse. It's really quite something spectacular. The moon can also end up in earth's shadow, creating a lunar eclipse. The moon turns a blood red color for a while. Finally, some man-made objects orbit earth. These artificial satellites have cameras and antennae on board to gather information. There are hundreds of them, as this exaggerated picture tries to demonstrate. Satellites are useful for the weather forecasts, satnav, TV and spying on other countries. Now it's your turn. Get a globe and a light and see if you are able to explain summer and winter, day and night, solar eclipse and the faces of the moon. Have fun!